don't think this demonstration we're about to show has ever been shown on a golf video that I've ever seen before. What about you? I, I think this could be a first that's okay. ever been seen on YouTube or a golf video. This could be the right, first right. time that this has been shown. And I think it's pretty, I don't know if it's groundbreaking, but it's super important. It's really crucial for your understanding of how the Mike Austin swing differs from the standard swing you might read it in a, in a book or see on TV or in a magazine, anything like that. And this is gonna demonstrate how the lower body action is gonna turn what we'll call the shoulder wheel. Now, Jerry's gonna describe first the right way, the wrong way, and then the right way to do it. And you're gonna see a big difference. So now from the viewer's perspective, from looking down the line, you don't see through the wheel, you only see the side of the wheel. So now what most teachers have taught people to do forever is turn their hips. In fact, let's do that without the hoop okay. real quickly. All right. Okay. And let us make a simple static golf swing. And okay. Yep. I'll just go to the top of my swing. Oh, oh that well, looks pretty good. It looks just fine. You so know? most golf teacher would say, well, you look good. You're turning your hips. Yeah. You're winding it up and everything. Okay. Now we'll now do let's... the same swing that okay. I just made okay. with this hoop. Now we're going to see that. Yeah, we'll get... What we're trying to do here with the hoop is we're trying to get the seventh cervical vertebrae, which is the called, again, our swing circle center. And we're trying to put that in the center of the hoop, and we're trying to line the hoop up with the club on the ground. Yeah, not here, not here. Right, like right, here. okay. So now show them that hip turn again, like okay. most teachers would teach people how to swing back. Okay, now notice a couple things here. Yeah, he's turned his hips, but, well, now the wheel is completely turned. It's like if if he had this attached to an axle, he would have completely bent the axle. Okay, so rather than bending the axle, and, and, and explain now, Jerry, what will happen. The two, there's two different things that can happen from there, and neither one of them is good. Okay, well, the first one, if I make a too big of a hip turn, right, and I'm actually, the axle's here, I'm actually breaking this wheel off the axle, which right. is right back in here. Right. And if I make that same move going back, well, let's, let's just make a big shift going right. through. Right, sure. I've made this, this hip turn, which is a little too much, as you can see. Yep. We'll see in a, minute, in a minute here. I'll make that same hip turn. And now you're going under. Oh, boy, we're in trouble now. This is... Where's that going, Steve? Well, this is going way off to the right, and this is really a big problem for a lot of better players, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. This isn't necessarily the problem of a lot of beginners but somebody who's a little, a little better, even down to some guys trying to be scratch golfers and are having a hard time at that point. They, this, is, this is the swing of somebody who's gonna hit a plateau, isn't it? Well, quite simply, this, this was my issue. That's right, and this is kind of the shape that we saw uh, in, inside when we were talking about the track man numbers and everything, that Jerry's kind of pushing and hooking a little bit on his pattern, which he's still refining, and he's in these positions. A little too much turn of the hips, and a little bit of back under again. And now the tangent here is heading out off into right field. Okay, now show them how you would, how somebody might try to compensate for that. So this might be maybe more of a beginner swing? Yeah, maybe more of a beginner okay. swing here. So we'll see. Same hip move going same back. Same hip move going back. Okay, now, now how are we gonna get the base of that wheel <laughs> back onto this line again? Yeah, well, here we go. we're gonna have to make a big whirly bird and twist back the other way again. Which is funny, I see a lot of YouTube videos where they're telling you to do exactly that move. Absolutely. Now, from this angle, from the face on angle, one thing I wanna point out, now when you, you, you know, I'll, I'll put my finger right above the top of his head here. Now watch what happens to his head when he does a hip turn as well. Major point here. Okay, as he turns his hips, his head sways. And now you're shooting like you're shooting a gun from, uh, from horseback instead of just stationary, okay? Right. It makes golf a lot more difficult when your eyes are moving back and forth, your head's moving back and forth, your swing circle center is moving, swaying to the right, and so your leverage is dissipated, and you won't be able to hit the ball as far unless you were to use more effort. And right. again, we don't want effort. Yeah. We want re lots of results, straight hitting, long hitting, with little results. So again, show them that beginning, uh, the technique where you're overcompensating to come back through again. This might be uh, what would be termed as a, what an over-the-top type of move coming through, this would some be people would the, call it. 
as you refer to some ball flight laws, this would be mm -hmm. a pull, it could be a pull slice depending on what the club head is doing. Yeah, right, right. But leaving the club head out. You could smother hook it that way too. You could do lots of things. The club head overrides. Nothing, nothing yes. good will happen. And this is probably one of the most common movement patterns that golfers have. Go ahead and show them the, okay, you'll see his head move off the ball over to his right foot. The swing plane is now way too far to the right. And now he's gonna to try to get it back around again. Now there's only one point in that swing where your hoop was ever at the ball. Boy, that window of timing is gonna be awfully difficult. Yeah. Again, making a, a tough game tougher. And this is what's the neatest part about what we're doing right here, right now, mm -hmm. is really showing you how the timing with the, this type of movement that we're gonna explain that's better than one we just shoot, showed you, right. is so much less timing dependent. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. let's so let's it. see, now you're gonna move the hoop and from the down the line perspective, from this viewer's perspective, you're not gonna see the hoop appear to do anything. That's right. From the face on perspective, we're gonna see the hoop rotate. So go ahead and now, you'll see a different leg action. I'll hold my finger here above his head. You'll see a much steadier head now. Now we're seeing more of the classic tilt like we talked about earlier. We're seeing a tilt with the knee action, the shoulder coming down. And now from down the line perspective, he has not bent the axle. You won't be able to see through the wheel. You're just looking at the side of the tire now. Now show him the downswing, how you're gonna reverse everything. And the wheel is just turning but it's not twisting off the plane with this target line. Now, what's the advantage of doing it this way? Well, we can see number one, the head stays very steady. Number two, we have an effective weight shift from right foot to left foot, as we talked about earlier. But now we have a situation where the torso just has to turn back, turn through, and now the arms can just relax and just fly around with the turn of the torso, completely relaxed and be right on line with the ball compared to, yeah, I'll take this from you for a second. Show me with that turn, the incorrect turn of the wheel, how somebody would make it onto a correct swing plane at the top of their swing and show them how you would have to put your arms and lift them onto a different plane than the body's turning on. So right now he's turning his body on more on this plane, but now his arms are going to have to lift up over his head on this plane. So his body's turning on this plane, his arms are turning on this plane, and good luck synchronizing all that together back down here again. This is where Mike would say there's no lifting of the arms. There's right. no lifting, it's just the turn that takes the arms up into position. And right. if you were to get them up with an incorrect backswing, we had a big hip turn, you'd have to lift your arms or else they'd be way over here. Now that's that's a, another pattern of movement that we see sometimes as well. And that leads to nothing good. And your ball's usually heading that way in a hurry when, the, when it's that way. They're stuck inside and they can't do anything from there. So super important when you're mastering the pivot that we've been talking about earlier and moving the legs, how you can move this hoop on the correct plane. Show them that one more time. Correctly. Get the direct action, the correct action. We're only going to be turning the wheel in place. Now go the other way, under. There's the under move when Mike is describing under, up, and out. He says this is the under part. The movement of the legs causing the right hip and shoulder to get under the left. That's the under part. The up and out is the direction he'll be releasing the club head in with a driver out across the target line, up meaning an upstrike into the ball. And that's where Mike was a genius so far ahead of his time because he arrived at this back in the 40s. And yep. uh, he was probably just modeling and following some great golfers that came before him, like Bobby Jones, Sam Snead, for example. Probably the late 30s, actually, mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, and, and, and now you're right back online again. This is, you know, again, Mike was such a genius here because, you know, hardly anybody that I see is teaching this. 